Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Standards channel. My name is Shanks and today we're gonna have a brand new video commentary for BFME 2 The Rise of the Witch King on the beautiful map Holin Edit. It is gonna be El Clasico, good against evil, elves against Isengard, Solas against Erwi. Before further ado, let's get it started. On the left side of the map we have the Elven player Solas from Germany against the Yellow Isengard player Erwi from Slovenia. Irby is also participating in the World Championship with a prize pool of $500 by the way. And we're gonna start with our round of 16 very soon, in which Irby will be facing against Imperialis first. If you don't wanna miss any of these games by the way guys, they're gonna be live streamed on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash beyondstandards. The link for that is gonna be in the video description down below. I would like to see you guys in there. Two furnaces for Irby, into the third furnace as he's also building up his Uruk pit. On the other side, two Malon trees into the barracks, into the third Malon tree from the German player Solas with his Elven faction. This is the map Holin Edit, and this game was also played on a neutral host by the way guys, which is really important to mention because as you know, uh, having the host advantage in Rise of the Witch King would change a lot in those games. That's why we are also always making all the tournaments on the neutral host. So no one has an advantage. Alright, we're gonna have Lorien Warriors first from the Elven player Solas. On the other side, Erwi is gonna start with his Urukai. Urukai, one of the strongest swordsmen in the game. They should be easily able to out-trade and win those skirmishes against those Lorien Warriors from the Elven faction. And yeah, talking about the map Holin Edit. Holin Edit is for me like a similar map to the Forts of Eisen, by the way, boys, because we have the same type of creeps in the same amount of creeps. With that being said, we have four work layers. Two of them are in the middle, and two of them are at the corner, here and here. And we have also two troll layers protecting those ins, just like in the map Forts of Eisen. The map has obviously a different layout, but from the creeps all alone, it is very similar to the Forts of Eisen, one of the most, if not the most played map in all Battle for Middle-earth games. Yeah, this is the patch 2.02 version 8.3. The version 8.4 should be released pretty soon. And as soon as it's gonna get released, we're gonna make a video about that. And talking about all the upcoming changes you need to be aware of. Lorien Warriors from Solas are around this side, top left, using those trees, getting stealthed. You can't even see them on the minimap anymore. Even we as Observer can see them. It's a great map for the Elven faction. I mean, every map with a lot of trees around is a great map for the elves because every unit, not only Lorien Warriors and Lorien Archers, but also the Mifflond Sentry units, those pikemen, they can get stealthed. Enemy stealth unit discovered, you can't see it because it's blocking, you know, the flags from the countries and the flags from the factions. Urukai are fighting against those Lorien Warriors, and as always, Urukai are gonna be able to out damage them and take them down. At the very same time, Irby was also able to, uh, to kill the troll from the troll layer at the bottom left side. That's gonna give him the chance to capture this inn. Isengard faction can get those black orcs from the inn, while the Elven faction can get those Rohan peasants from the inn. Obviously, the black orcs are the better units and a great alternative to the Urukai for the Isengard player, because they are almost as powerful but much cheaper. Dorian Warriors are moving from the middle, and Solas is definitely playing a very more aggressive style with the Elven faction. Normally Elves, they like to make a lot of archers, they like to camp out, and they like to play for the late game. But Solas was bu building up the stable, getting his Lancers on the field. However, Irby has already some pikemen around, so it looks like he will be ready to defend those crossbowmen. Oh, but he is not paying attention. Nice micro here from the Elven player Solas. Taking down the entire veteran of these uh, crossbowmen. Using Rallying Call now, as those Lorien Warriors are a great uh, choice against those pikemen. But the Warg Riders from the Isengard player Irby are joining the battlefield at pretty much the same time. So, Cav for both the players, Solas, and but also Irby. I mean, the Lorien Warriors, they were buffed, so they're gonna not get one shotted. They will be able to withstand the trample damage a couple of times. Nice micro here. Nice macro it as well. He will be able to take down this furnace. Will be forced to get away. Can't really deal with those pikemen. And those lancers are almost level 2. 
But they are not level 2 yet, which means they won't have the self-regeneration and Solas at the same time is creeping the second work layer in the middle of the map. As Irvi was already able to take down the troll creep and also capture this inn at the bottom left side. We have the first Black Orc Battalion joining the battlefields now and this inn is gonna work like a second barracks for the Isengard player Irvi. Um, Solas has three battalions of Lancers so he's gonna definitely play much more aggressively than they are used to from the Elven players, but we have seen so far in the World Championship at least. And, you know, that's gonna force, if nothing else, that Irvi has to make a lot of pikemen to be ready to defend against this many Lancers. However, the Uruk pikemen units, they are so strong, they are quite mobile as well, and they are not as weak as like the Trollmaster pikemen, or the pikemen from like Easterlings, even though Easterlings are also not very very bad, but I would say Uruk pikemen are one of the, if not the strongest tier 1 pikemen in the game. I mean Isengard on the other side can't make other pikemen besides those Uruk pikemen. Um, they also cost 400 each. Malon tree has been taken down, we're gonna have a huge fight in the middle of the map as Solas is trying to build up a statue. In the meantime, we have right now for the Alvin player 350 command points collected. 5 power points available after the rallying call, which can be used for the heal, but I think he's gonna try to save for the 10 to go for the end shotting mist, which is gonna give him a lot of tool to work with in order to win those fights. But he's gonna go for the heal because he needs, you know, some sustain in this situation. Black orcs are also around, they're gonna get taken down first. Urukai, they can withstand so many tramples with the war chant. Rallying Call was, uh, was on cooldown by the way, as Irby didn't have to use his war chant defensively before, so he had the buff advantage, but yet uh, Solas will still be able to defend himself without losing too much. All he lost was one Malon tree only, and yeah, obviously he was also forced to go for the heal. In the meantime, Irby has more units coming, and he has collected almost 4 power points after the war chant and the Kreebane. He has 525 command points available as well. And yeah, there is a will from Solas, so he will have uh, the sustain, he will be healing up over time all the time. And you can also build multiple wells, by the way, to kinda, you know, speed up this healing progress. Because the well, they can get still, um, they can get stacks, and I think you can build up to three wells, and this is gonna make your units respawn and heal up much, much faster. Nice micro from both the players with those lancers and with those bark riders, definitely. Solas has to play a little bit more defensively right now as he's getting attacked from all the sides at once from Warc Riders, from Black Orcs, but also from Urukai and Pikemen. Barracks is still only level 1 and no heroes on the field whatsoever from the from the players. So, I mean, Irby didn't go for the for the Dords or for the Sharku yet and the Elven player Solas didn't also go for Hyldir and Glorfindel. The reason why I'm naming those two heroes from each faction is the fact that those are the most used heroes from these factions at least. I mean obviously we have also situations in, we in which we see heroes like Grima aka Wormtong and also Arvin or Elrond but you know most of the time the Elven player chooses the heroes Haldir and Glorfindel and the Isengard player chooses the heroes Lord who is definitely the most cost efficient hero in the game and also Sharku who is a great spot. Uh, for those Bark Riders from the Isengards player. Uh, creep secured and the Trash is secured, by the way, from the Yellow Isengards player Irby. Looks like they are just trying to group here for a big fight. And I gotta appreciate the fact that Solas doesn't wanna make and only spam Lorien Archers. He's definitely having a different playstyle, which is always fresh to see. Okay, Vision of Palantir has been used, Warchan has been used. Vision of Palantir is gonna give vision control in stealth, you know, detect stealth units, which in this situation can be very useful, and also speed up those allied units. This way they will be able to chase you down, catch you, and kill you. Um, and Isengard's player at the same time is also making sure that he will be able to protect those furnaces, but this furnace is gonna be taken down. The troll creep at the top right side, and the work layer at the top left side, are still remaining as well as the work layer at the bottom left side. Tower is coming up, a statue is coming up for Solas. Solas has to definitely play a little bit more careful and defensively. There was a really bad trample there, but he didn't get too much punish for that. Heal was also used now from the Alvin player Solas. 
9 power points collected now. 585 command points available, but he has to play very defensively. That will give Irby the time to expand and to get more and more map control and more and more resources. The Malone tree, one of the most important Malone trees has been taken down and I gotta I gotta love the fact that both players are spamming so many calves all the time. Yeah, we see so many Vark Riders, we see so many Lancers, it's always nice. 625 command points now for Irby and 510 for Solas. Solas has almost 10 power points collected and I'm assuming he's gonna go for either the Alvin Wood which could be a risky move because he doesn't really need the fear resistance against Isengard and the mist is gonna be obviously the choice because this is potentially the most chosen 10 power point spell from the spellbook of the Elven faction. And it's similar to the Kreebane, uh, which is which <coughs> sorry boys, which has a great synergy with the Elven passive. And on top of that, also nullifying the enemy leadership, which is right now not existing, but also debuffing them on top of that. So it's a very useful ability. And elves, as they like to clump, it's a great tool to actually control the fight in your favor. Kribin is gonna be used. Trample incoming in this on this Ukai. They are being debuffed, and obviously Solas has the buff advantage right now. Since Warchan was used before, and it's still on cooldown. Buff advantage in Rise of the Witch King means a lot because the fact that you can increase. Ooh, that's a nice trample right there! With those Vark Riders, boys. And those Lorian Archers are gonna be taken down. Solas, unfortunately, didn't have enough pikemen to protect them. Tower is coming up. And those Lorian Archers, as strong as they are, but they are like glass cannons, they will be taken down in a second if you are being careless. Um, the game is kind of going back and forth. That's what I'm expecting from a game in this skill level. They are definitely two of the best players of Rise of the Witch King. Some little harassments are happening around the top left side, but this one should be protected. Industry being used from the Isengard spellbook. That's my, you know, he needs to pick the vision of Palantir for that. Otherwise, he could also go for the Devastation, which is, you know, one of, <clears throat> one of my favorite or most favorite, actually, uh, resource gathering Power point ability in Rise of the Witch King because it gives you insta money, like insta res <coughs> resources. And uh, you know, on, on the other side, like industry, you need to make sure that this furnace is gonna be alive for a long time, and also fuel the fires will me will mean that you need to make multiple um, lumber mills in order to get some value of this power point ability. And the first hero from the Elven player, Solas, is joining the battlefield, and his name is Glorfindel, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Isengard still playing without, without a hero. Isengard units are pretty strong, and this is a great combination. He has so many pikemen to make sure that he has enough counter to those endless Rwandal Lancers, and also Glorfindel now. He has Vark Riders to have enough damage output against those Lorian Archers. And he needs to also just make some Urukai Black Orcs in between to complete the power of the army with the double buff action. Like buff and debuff in vision control. Talking about the buff, Warchan has been used as he was grouping every single unit in the middle of the map. And he's now going for a big attack. So many pikemen and they will be dealing incredible amount of damage with the small on tree. He's getting bursted down within seconds. Solas was able to place one of these pikemen in the porcupine formation right in front of the tower. There's also archers inside, they get leadership from the statue by the way, and dealing increased damage. Pikemen are very vulnerable against archers regardless, and they don't have leadership right now, and those units, they don't have debuff on them. So they have the leadership from the statue, that means they will be dealing 33% increased damage. And that's what I'm saying by the way, Charku is here, Lord is here. Charco was able to kill so many Lancers and Solas, was, and Solas was fully committing to take down this Furnace level 3 with the Industry on it, which is really important to take it down because it's gonna give Isengard so much money. And Solas in the meantime actually might be able to take down even another level 3 Furnace here with those units being around. Charco has to avoid those pikemen and Lords will be able to deal with them anyway. He's almost level 5 which is gonna unlock the leadership. And beside the Mist, Alvin faction doesn't really have anything to negate the effect of the leadership from Lourdes. And obviously the Kreebane has a shorter cooldown than the Mist. Warchant is, you know, 
As always, very strong power point ability, which is increasing the damage and the armor of the allied units by 50% each. Uh, Glorfindel is only level 1 still, so needs the level 3 power spike, which is gonna unlock the Blade of Purity. 14 power points collected on the other side for the Elven player Solas. He has only 460 command points available. But on the other side, he was able to kill multiple furnaces. Uh, Irby has still those two level 3 furnaces, each of them are increasing his command points by 100. So losing them would hurt him big time. Nice commitment in the backside definitely with those Revander Lancers, but that also gave a lot of power points to his opponent Irby. Luckily, he was still able to save many of these Lancers. 12 power points collected by the way for the Isengard player Irby. As Solas is trying to creep at the top left side, but this creep is gonna get contested and will be taken by the Isengard player, Irby, if he is actually paying attention. In this situation, you want to make sure to kill those pikemen first. In the meantime, uh, this Glorfindel has to be very careful, by the way, because Lourdes is already level 4, and that's unlocking his cripple ability. And before the Glorfindel is level 3, and as long as he is on the horse, he will be very vulnerable against pikemen. And pikemen are already on the field, and also Vark Riders, Sharku, level 3. So enough damage output to burst down those Glorfindel, even with his Blade of Purity, which is not even unlocked just yet. 14, almost 15 power points collected by Erbio, by the way. On the other side, we have Eagle Summon ready. And that's a great choice from Solas. Why? Because right now his opponent doesn't have too many units that can deal with those Eagle. He can only shoot with Lords and like with this 2 crossbowman battalion. And I think that's not gonna be enough to burst them down fast enough before they can take down your entire army. Nice micro here, nice harassment with those Black Riders and Sharku. Very, uh, a lot of harassments are happening. You can see those small trades all the time. Uh, and no one is actually going pretty much ever or, you know, over 700 command points. 650 command points for the... Isengard player and the Eagles were summoned now from Solas. Solas is gonna use them to deal. And Lourdes, uh, attacking Lourdes is pointless. Because with heroes you pretty much deal zero damage to the enemy heroes. Um, the damage should be really buffed from those Eagles on top of, uh, you know, on those, on those heroes. But killing army on, this, on the other side and killing structures is very, very easy. You can see this Lourdes can face tank a lot of damage. Uh, luckily for the Elven player Solas. Again, there is not much around that can deal damage to those eagles, and Lords will eventually gonna be taken down. You can also later on try to take down this tower here, or try to take down some of those resource buildings, in this case, those uh, furnaces. Nearly 18 power points collected by the Isengard player. Industry is available one more time. Uh, should be using it potentially on this one, even though this one is level 3. Armory is coming up for the Isengard player, and we're gonna see those upgraded Urukai pretty soon, and Vark Riders potentially. Sharku is also around still, but a lot of damage has been dealt with those Eagle, and Lourdes has been taken down as well. Industry has been used on this level 3 furnace. 600 command points, 19 power points now. He has a great amount of resource income, I would say, and that's why he should be easily able to afford this armory and all the upgrades on it. Um, in the very same time, at the very same time, uh, I see two barracks here for the German player Solas. He has Mirkwood Arches coming soon. I hope he's gonna also get some protection, since he needs to face and deal with so many Vark Riders with a double buff. Mist is being used here at the top left side, hiding those units, but Kribane is gonna be able to spot them. Crossbowmen are here and Sharku is diving in, which might be a risky risk he needs to avoid it from taking. Because there are some pikemen around and the Sharku is taking so much damage. He will actually be able to get away. I was expecting them to deal, to deal a little bit more damage. And so many of these elven units from Solas are also gonna be able to get away. Okay, in the meantime, I mean, we have some defense here now. A tower in the middle of the map. He can always put those Mirkwood arches inside of that if he really wants to. If he really needs to. But one thing is really important to mention. Once Isengard has the heavy armor purchased and this forge plates purchased on his Urukai, Pikemen yes, and Vork Riders, you will be surprised how fast those towers can be taken down. Like in very... in like a couple of seconds. And actually surprisingly that this Glorfindel couldn't even get any experience just yet. 
still sitting on the same amount of level and still a little bit away from hitting level 2. But the true power spike of the zero, as you know, is gonna be level 3. Okay, so Armory is already level 2, the level 3 upgrade is incoming and the Watcher has been summoned somewhere. I can't even tell you where in the middle of the map. But it looks like, I mean, he was able to kill this Mirku, the Arch is not even dead. And the Lancers were still able to get away. Lourdes is spinning down Glorfindel, by the way, boys. Glorfindel is only level 1, but Lourdes is level 5. And the Blade of Purity is not available, but the Carnage is. And you can see, Lourdes doesn't care about being the cheaper hero. But he's saying, I am cheaper, but I am also stronger. And takes down his opponents, Glorfindel, who was only level 1. And yeah, I mean, obviously, Lourdes is an anti-hero. That's what I would like, uh, like to call him. He is uh, he's existing pretty much to kill and pin down enemy, hero, enemy heroes, right? With the cripple ability from a long range, can snap you down, can throw the sword, and then can take in most situations those 1v1s against pretty much every hero. And like, unle you know, unless they have like a Blade of Purity, Blade Master, or the Rage of the North active, which is more powerful than the Carnage, because this is gonna give them double armor. Charco has to be careful. He's level 5, by the way. Almost level 5. Um, we have 12 power points collected by Solas. Solas doesn't like to spam many, many archers, and I think that's like the win, you know, the biggest win condition of the Isengard, I mean, of the Elven faction. Like, make many, many Mirkwoods, spam pikemen to protect them, and then make end mood and go for a siege. And I think that's the Elven gameplay we have seen we so many times in the last it. months, and I like that Solas is trying to do something different, something else. But look at this Urukai Pikeman. They are so strong and they look so sexy, boys, with those heavy armor purchased. And they will be so tanky now. And if you think the Urukai were already tanky before, then watch them now. Base tanking the entire damage income. Kappa. <laughs> I mean, those are Mirkus, that doesn't count. Those are the best archers in the game. They cost also 800 each, by the way. But he got reduced cost because of the statue. If you didn't know, the statue is giving you reduced cost of the infantry, which has obviously more value than you have those expensive units. You want to recruit. Almost 15 power points collected. I think at this point they wanna they wanna save for the 25. 750 command points available for the album player Solas. On the other side, 14 power points collected after the Watcher. Uh, Warchan and Vision of Palantir has been used. Those units, they are upgraded. And Kribane is available as well. Mist is being used to debuff the enemy units, but Kribane is gonna be used as well. That's gonna nullify the leadership of the statue here, which is gonna be taken down anyway. Ooh, that's a nice cloud break timing. Right, they are nice positioning here with those pikemen as well, making sure that those Mirkwoods have the time, the best time of their life. The lenses are going into the backline and cloud break. It feels like it lasts forever. And those Mirkwoods, as strong as they are, but there are just too many of them, and he can't deal with his units, even though he was using his Cloud Break. Don't get me wrong, Cloud Break was a great choice, but it's gonna delay now his 25 power points, which could be the game changing moment. But Isengard's player didn't pick anything just yet. And he has 19 power points, but the power points are rising, it's almost 20 already. And he's a little bit more than 5 power points away from summoning the dragon, who is a base and structure destroyer, boys. The Stucci is gonna be taken down, the power points are rising, look at this, as those lances are getting killed from those pikemen with forge blades and heavy armor. Glorfindel is back in the business, gonna get dismounted here, because that's gonna give him more resistance against pikemen, and that's what the base, what the army is based on from the Isengard player early in the situation. Malon trees are getting bursted down, like if they would be made of paper. The armory is very tanky, by the way, is also able to shoot down at the enemy units. Glorfindel is trying to get some experience here from killing some units, but he's struggling to kill them, he needs to hit them multiple times, but he's gonna get crippled down again. 25 power points unlocked, Glorfindel is gonna be taken down, leadership is active, and he's gonna go for the Dragon Strike. Dragon Strike can be used right there, which can kill those towers and those barracks, let's see when and where he's gonna use it. Or 
does he even need that? That's gonna be the main question. Because the commitment on the fortress is already happening. And a big fiesta is incoming. By the way, guys, if you are here for the first time and you are looking for more Battle for Middle Earth content in the future, we are hosting events, tournaments, cash prize events to actually increase the competitive part of those uh, beautiful RTS games. And this channel is all about Battle for Middle Earth games, by the way. Commentary videos, tutorials, guys. So leave me a sub and definitely leave a like on this video as well. As Solas is demolishing everything, that's gonna be the end of the game, the end of the cast. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, if this is your very first time here, you need to also check me out on my Twitch channel, which again is only based on uh, Battle for Middle Earth games, Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards. The link for that is gonna be down in the video description below. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace, guys.